throughout the entire course, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code for my IDE. You're welcome to use any IDE you prefer. And if you don't plan on using Visual Studio, you can skip this video if you'd like. I'm going to walk through setting up Visual Studio to support Elixir and Phoenix Heeks templates. We won't be getting into Heeks templates in this course, but I figured we might as well be set up to work with them in the future. First things first, we need to download and install Visual Studio code. So let's head over to code.visualstudio.com or Google, just Google Visual Studio code. And we're going to click on download uh, for free, the stable build. So this is for Mac. Well, we should probably make sure it's for Mac. Download the stable version. Okay. And once that's downloaded, just unzip it. And then we just have to drag this right into our applications directory. And now command space. So Visual Studio Code. Um, yes, we know we downloaded it from the internet. Okay, awesome. And then I'm going to right click this and hit options and say keep in doc. Open up Visual Studio Code if you haven't yet. And we need to get some extensions installed. To support Elixir, we're going to need uh, Elixir LS. So if you click on extensions here, and we're just going to search for Elixir LS, and it's the top one here with the 466,000 downloads, click install. So this helps us with language support like code completion and debugging. We don't need this next extension for the course, but I figure it doesn't hurt to get your IDE set up for Phoenix syntax highlighting for Heeks files. So we're gonna go ahead and do it because you're probably going to be learning Phoenix and doing cool Elixir stuff outside of this course. So let's get you set up. So go ahead and search for Phoenix framework. Whoops. Uh, Phoenix framework. And it's the one with 55,000 downloads. So go ahead and hit install. Okay, awesome. Now let's set up our settings for these. We need to hit command shift and P. And then we want to search. This is our command palette. We're just going to search for user settings. Okay. And you want to click on the one with JSON in parentheses. And it will just be blank right now. All right. So I'm not going to make us type this all out because it's crazy. So inside this video, you'll see a file called settings.json. And it will look just like this. And let's copy and paste this, and then I'll go through everything and explain it the best I can. So go ahead and copy all this JSON from the file that you just downloaded. And um, get rid of the curly braces if you included the ones from my file. And there we go. We have our settings. You're going to want to save this. And you want to make sure you open the settings. All right, so let's just run through this line by line. Elixir LS dot suggest specs. This setting it to false, it disables automatic suggestions for function specs. Um, and then the dialyzer enabled true. Uh, it's a tool for static analysis of code. And then the signature after complete, setting that to false. It disables showing function signatures after auto completion. And then Elixir LS fetch depths. Um, we're, we want this set to false. And we don't want it to fetch project dependencies. There are some cases where like if you're trying to debug why maybe your settings aren't working, you might want to set this true for a time frame, but for the most part, we're going to keep this false, okay? And then inside the file.associations, we have this asterisk.heeks and then the phoenix-heeks. And this tells VS Code to associate all files with the .heeks extension as a phoenix-heeks template, okay? And then down here in the Elixir, the format on save true and the default formatter jakebecker.heeks. Elixir LS. This specifies that the, the uh, for Elixir files, the editor should format the code on save using the jakebecker.elixirls formatter. All right. And then the phoenix.heeks format on save 
true. And then the default formatter is the Jake Becker dot Elixir LS again. Same concept on save are going to use the Jake Becker dot LS formatter, but for Phoenix Heeks files. And then we have our Emmet dot include language included languages. So basically it's just telling Emmet to apply HTML expansions to all of these file types. Okay. And then the trigger expansion on tab, um, this, this, um, allows you to type an Emmet abbreviation and press the tab key to expand it. This is just allowing our dot heeks files and any embedded heeks or I, or I should say embedded elixir to just have some, uh, auto completion. All right. So those are our VS code settings. And these just help, you know, set up our VS code environment for a more like streamlined and tailored experience when we're working with Elixir and other Phoenix projects. So go ahead and save this and let's wrap this video up with an optional theme. I think uh, the most popular question that I get asked is what theme do I use? So let's go ahead and install it. So back to the extensions tab or column, I guess, whatever you want to call it. If you search for Elixir theme and it's complete coincidence that it's called Elixir. I found this theme years ago before I even loved Elixir. So I guess it's just kind of meant to be right, which is kind of cool. I don't know how to say this guy's name. Otherwise I'd give the creator a shout out cause I love it. Um, but go ahead and install the Elixir theme here. And then when it's done installing, it's going to pop up with uh, what you want to run. I run the no italics less dark too. Um, but if you want to change it, you just go to set color theme and you can change it to whatever you want. But this is what I prefer. And this is my IDE setup. It's, it's pretty and, uh, now that we have everything set up, we're ready to dive into some Elixir code. So I will see you in the next video.